On Thursday, May 29th, SpaceX released a Mars update and Starship update with a speech from Elon Musk detailing plans for the next evolutions of the Starship program. We were able to receive a lot of new information about the hardware on Starship, the different evolutions and versions that they have planned, and realistic details about the actual Mars colonization plans. Elon started the presentation detailing progress that they've made since 2019 when they first broke ground at Boca Chica. He went on to congratulate the team for the progress that they've made over the past six years at the newly incorporated Starbase Texas. As previously announced, he reiterated plans to build a large factory or a gigabay factory at both Starbase Texas and at Cape Canaveral, Florida in order to facilitate their ambitious launch cadence that they want to achieve. Ultimately, we're aiming for the ability to produce a thousand ships a year, so three ships a day. So in order to achieve this goal, we have to, be, we have to make rapidly reusable rockets so that the, uh, the, the cost per flight, the cost per ton to Mars is as low as possible. We could, it's actually four hours, it's like a pirate. RRR. It's like <laughs> rapidly reusable, reliable rockets is the key. RRR. <laughs> After congratulating the team once again for all of the progress that they've made so far over the past nine flights, especially being able to catch the Super Heavy booster, he went on to elaborate on the plans to catch the actual Starship. As many have previously theorized, they will indeed catch the Starship in a similar method to the booster, with small pins on either side so that the catch arms on the second tower would be able to catch Starship after a couple of orbits. With the ship, uh, it takes a bit longer because it's got to orbit Earth a few times until the ground track comes back over the launch pad. Uh, but it, it, the ship is also intended to be reflown multiple times per day. So that's what we hope to demonstrate later this year, maybe as soon as two or three months from now. Obviously, this is a very ambitious goal, and they have other problems that they need to figure out with Starship first. But if they are able to achieve what they plan, that would be very impressive to see later this year, or early next year. Moving right along, though, Elon started sharing hardware updates, including updates about the Raptor 3 engine. And I believe this is the first time that the public has been able to see the Raptor vacuum version, which you see the larger on the left. I mean, even industry experts, when we showed a picture of the Raptor 3, said that engine is not complete. So then we said, well, here's the engine not complete, firing uh, at a level of efficiency that has never been achieved before. So in order to make the engine like that, we had to simplify so many parts of the design, incorporate uh, secondary fluid circuits and electronics in the structure of the engine itself. Uh, so everything is contained and protected. Uh, it is uh, a marvel of engineering, frankly. Uh, so the, the booster will look a little naked on the bottom because the, uh, the Raptor 3 engines don't require a heat shield. So it, look like, it, it looks like there's kind of parts missing but that's just because the, the Raptor heat shield uh, does not, the, the, the Raptor 3 does not need a heat shield. So it's just, it's just st standing there, there in a bathed in flaming plasma. Interestingly, Elon announced that they will no longer throw away the hot stage ring in between the booster and the Starship. Instead, they will have an integrated interstage and keep it for every flight to maximize their reuse and reusability. We even got to see a version of it on the real hardware sitting next to him during this entire speech. Then one of the other technologies that's key for Mars is, is doing orbital propellant transfer. So you can think of this like similar to aerial refueling for airplanes, uh, but in this case it's orbital refilling of rockets, which has never been done before. Uh, but it is you know, technically feasible that the two starships would get together and one starship would transfer fuel and oxygen, and actually most of the mass is oxygen. It's almost 80% oxygen that gets transferred, um, a little over 20% fuel. And so once you, you, you so you'd send a starship to orbit with uh, that's full of payload, and then you send up a bunch of other starships up, and you would refill the propellant on that starship. And once the, it, the propellant tanks are mostly full, then you can depart for the Mars, for Mars or the Moon, or yeah. So. This is an important technology, which uh, we should hopefully uh, demonstrate next year.
This is great news to hear. Again, super ambitious, but I would rather them push hard and try to achieve that sometime next year. Elon then went on to talk about heat shield tiles and developing new technologies that would not only be able to allow them to have reusable heat shield tiles, but something that could withstand the extra heat that they would experience re-entering the Martian atmosphere. Because it's an extremely hard problem uh, to, to be able to withstand the extreme heat and pressure of re-entry. The only things that, that can really withstand this level of heat are uh, advanced sort of ceramics, uh, kind of, uh, you know, basically glass, alumina, uh, some types of carbon-carbon, uh, but very, very little actually can survive the, uh, and, and with, with reusability, without getting, uh, without eroding um, or falling off or cracking, uh, can survive the stresses of reentry. Uh, so this will be the first time uh, that it's done, that, that, that a reusable orbital heat shield is developed um, and it needs to be obviously extremely reliable. Um, this, will, this will be something they'll be working on for a few years, I think, to, to keep honing the, the heat shield. Um, it's, it's a very, it's, it's, it is an achievable thing, so we're not trying to do something that isn't achievable. It is within the realm of physics to get this done, just an extraordinarily difficult thing to get done. We, we, want to, we want to use the same heat shield for Earth that we use for Mars because there are many other factors with the heat shield, uh, such as making sure the tiles don't crack or fall off or anything like that. Um, so we want to have the same heat shield structure, same material on Earth as on Mars, so we can test it uh, hundreds of times on Earth before going to Mars and be confident that when it goes to Mars, it will work. Elon then went on to discuss a couple of upgrades to both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship itself, talking about height increases, a little bit more fuel that both will be able to carry with them, and performance increases due to the Raptor 3 engines. These are planned upgrades that are subject to change as needs are identified, but at least has a current path for the next version, possibly the next two versions of these vehicles. For example, the next version of the Starship upper stage will have six engines, as the previous two versions did, but eventually will be upgraded to nine engines with three additional vacuum Raptor engines. And so inevitably, the Starship stack will have 42 engines. Um, and then along the way, we could do very cool things like have a moon base, um, like moon base alpha. Uh, anyway, we should have a moon base alpha, which is the next step after the Apollo program would be to have a base on the moon. Um, so you could, like a, you could have a, like a gigantic um, science station doing research about the nature of the universe on the moon. It would be very cool. I don't know about you guys, but this is super encouraging to me. I thought that Elon had all but given up on the moon, would advocate for going completely to Mars. But since they have their contract with NASA, I love to see that they're talking about and working on ideas for lunar transport and building a moon base. Also, I believe that this kind of confirms what many of us were wondering regarding whether how they were going to deploy payloads. And it looks like they're going to use a more simplified payload bay door instead of some sort of interesting hungry hippo clamp system. However, this is a presentation about going to Mars and making life multiplanetary. So Elon talked about Mars transfer windows and when the soonest opportunity SpaceX might have in order to launch their first demo flight to the Red Planet. So in terms of, Mar like, when can you go to Mars? So you can go to Mars every two years or every 26 months. So the next Mars opportunity is at the end of next year in about 18 months. So November, December is the next Mars opportunity. So we'll try to make that opportunity if we get lucky. I think we'll probably have a 50-50 chance right now because we've got to... Uh, we've got to figure out orbital refilling uh, in order to um, have enough capability to go to Mars. But if we achieve orbital refilling in time, then we will launch the first uh, uncrewed uh, Starship to Mars at the end of next year. So th this is a tentative game plan here where we're hoping to, that we're hoping to achieve, um, where we increase the, the cadence of flights to Mars dramatically with every launch window. So every, every roughly two years, um, we are dramatically increasing the number of, of, of ships that go to Mars. Um, and ultimately try to get to 1,000 or 2,000 ships uh, you know, per Mars uh, rendezvous. Um, so the, the, 
I mean, as a rough order of magnitude, this is just guesses, obviously, but we, we need to get about a, thou, about, about a million tons, is my guess, um, to the surface of Mars to make um, uh, a civilization on Mars self-sustaining. Um, and get to that critical point where uh, if, the, if the resupply shifts from Earth stop coming for any reason, Mars still succeeds. Mars can still grow. And so you can't be missing anything. You can't be missing even like the equivalent of vitamin C or anything. You've got to have everything you need for Mars to grow. Um, that's, that's essential. So my guess is that's about a million tons, but it might be 10 million tons. Uh, I hope it's not 100 million tons. That'd be a lot. Um, but uh, we want to try to get to that point and secure the future of civilization as quickly as possible. For the first time, Elon started talking about actual candidates for where the first Martian cities would be built and announced that they're looking at the Arcadia region. Of course, that's subject to change, but right now it's looking like that's their most likely candidate region because they need somewhere that would be close to ice and would be a convenient landing spot that is away from mountainous regions as well. He then announced plans that the first several flights of Starship to Mars would have Optimus robots on board that would pave the way for humans and begin construction of at least the early base, if not the full-blown city, before humans arrive. Assuming the first missions are successful and they land successfully, we would send humans on, on the next mission uh, and we really start building the infrastructure for Mars. So, anyway, maybe... We're, just to be safe, we might just do two, two landing ep episodes with the uh, Optimus and do the third one with humans. We'll see. So that, that classic picture of the workers on the Empire State. <laughs> Elon then began to wrap up the whole speech by talking about communications at Mars and how with Starlink, they'll be able to have laser communications that will be able to travel at the speed of light. So the delay in communications would be as little as three minutes or as up to 22 minutes, depending on the position of Mars, if it's on the other side of the Earth from the sun. He also reiterated that Starlink is the primary financial factor that is paying for all of this development for Starship, Starbase, and all of these Martian plans. He then laid out the tentative plans for what the first humans would be doing once they arrive there, setting up the first habitats, installing solar panels and power generation, making sure that they can develop their own water sources, and be able to start putting in the groundwork so that the huge fleet of one to 2,000 starships would be able to arrive and land at spaceports, hopefully far enough away from the Martian city to not cause any problems if there's any accidents but close enough that they would be able to deliver all of the resources that they need in order to get the first outpost going. Finally, Elon ended this presentation with some words of inspiration for all of us, not just SpaceX. So anyone out there, like how cool would that, would that be? And even if you don't want to do it, maybe that you have uh, a son or daughter who wants to do that or a friend who wants to do it, and I think it would be the adventure, the, the best adventure that it, one could possibly do is to go and help build a new civilization on a new planet. Yeah, but anyway, this is, this is like an incredible thing to have like this amazing city on Mars, the first city on another planet, and um, a new world. Um, and it's also an opportunity to, I think for the Martians to, to rethink how they want civilization to be. So you can maybe rethink, like, what kind of form of government do you want? What new rules do you want to have? Um, there's a lot of freedom and opportunity in Mars to do a recompile on civilization, which will be up to the Martians. So, all right, let's get it done. Despite recent setbacks with the Starship program, it is speeches Thank like everyone. this that remind us why we are supporting this program in the first place. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.